What is the happiest place on earth? Hey there, Breakfast Club. We hope that you are doing well and growing in your trust in the King as we enter the kingdom in this series. We are looking at how the King describes his kingdom both now and in the future. These are wonderful pictures that we hope are encouraging you and strengthening your commitment to the King and your desire to invite as many people into the kingdom as possible. Now, if I was to ask you what the happiest place on earth is, you'd likely answer Disneyland. At Disneyland, everything is meant to take your mind off of everything that is happening outside of the park. Lights are changed before they have a chance to burn out. Garbage is picked up immediately. Everything is meant to be happy, happy, happy. Yet, at the happiest place on earth, there is a sadness. We know there is no such thing as a talking mouse. Everyone knows the Disney princesses are all paid actors who will likely be considered too old for the role within the next few years. The price to eat will make you not so happy immediately. People will cut in line. Families will argue. The park will be found to be closed after your family drove across the country to get in, forcing it to open with a BB gun. Oh no, wait. That was Wally World, sorry. Anyway, you can't escape the real world, the broken world, even at the happiest place on earth. Knowing that makes the description of the kingdom that much better. Listen to this. Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation. And look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people. And the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. I will answer them before they even call me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. In those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain. I, the Lord, have spoken. The kingdom will eclipse even Disneyland so badly that no one is going to say, Oh, I wish we could just ride Splash Mountain one more time. God says he's making everything new. And then, like he's opening the gate, he says, Rejoice forever in my creation. What a statement. Not only is he giving us permission to be rejoicing always, but he actually believes it's possible. Many of us can rejoice in a happy place for a while, but forever? <laughs> wow, can it be possible? He says, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Now, I'm not usually a gambler, but I'd be willing to bet that God can out-architect Walter Disney any day of the week. When God creates a happy place, it will be some kind of happy place. And get this, it is not only a happy place for us, it is a happy place for God. He says, I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people. God is going to be dancing and celebrating right along with us. He'll be as giddy about the whole thing as we are. And do you remember the days when we often prayed with sinful motives and they weren't answered? Those days will be over. It says, I will answer them before they even call to me. If the kingdom were anything like Disneyland, it sounds like we'll all, all be receiving VIP passes to the happiest place there ever was or ever could be. We will be rejoicing because of God. And amazingly, 
he will be rejoicing because of us. Hmm. Let's pray. Our Father, how amazing is it that you give us this window into the kingdom. How astounding it is that you will be rejoicing with us, over us, because of us. Who are we, any of us? that you would invite us to such a state of being. But you did. You are. And we are both humbled by your generosity and anxious for your arrival. May your kingdom come. You are our great hope. Amen. All right, everyone, tomorrow we are sliding into the weekend and we are going to answer the question, seriously, who's in charge? I'll see you then. Take care, everyone.